Hello and welcome to Across Louisiana. Our guests today are Kevin Gardere, Rob Latka, Patricia Cox, Andre Jaca, and Ronnie Cole. And we'll be right back. back to Across Louisiana. Always a pleasure to have Kevin Gardere on the show. Kevin is the Executive Director of Development for Bridge House. Kevin, welcome. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for having us on again. It's a pleasure. Uh, big event coming up. Huge. Huge event. Huge. Uh, one of your, I mean, you always have events. So we do. When, you say, when do. you say this is huge, which one's not? Right. Well, this is the oldest. This yeah. is kind of the signature Bridge House event. So tell us all about it. That we, Yeah, it was started 20 years ago because uh, a few of our board members and volunteers and a staff member were just tired of having the black tie affair galas. They wanted to have something fun. And you know, back then, 20 years ago, addiction and alcoholism was still kind of pushed under mm -hmm. the rug. Not that it isn't today, but it's a little bit more yeah. open. Yeah. So uh, they decided to have a mock Mardi Gras ball um, where there's actually a parade in it. There is a king and queen. We have a mini parade. It's held at Blaine Kern's Mardi Gras World well, that helps. on the East Bank. That does help. So you get to see the, all the floats as you're walking through to get to the back room. And then, um, you know, we, we have a huge silent auction. There's usually about five or six boards, mm -hmm. a raffle, and um, ELS will be performing for the entertainment. They Seriously? Are, yes, they are really good. Uh, it's some local ladies that have moved on to uh, Alabama. Mm -hmm. Ticket prices Ticket are... is $100. Uh, being our signature event and having a king and queen this year is James Carville and Mary Madeline. Oh, my God. So being our 20th anniversary and election year, it should be a lot of yeah. fun. We might want to just sit them two down at the table okay. and and see what a night looks like right around this time with the election going on. Kevin, your, your uh, website is bridgehouse.org. All information about the event can be found on the website? All of the information can be found. Can, can you register on the website as well? Yes, you can buy tickets online and there's still tickets available. We're expecting close to a thousand people wow. at this event. Um, you know, it has just grown over the years and it's amazing. You yeah. know, we invited all of our past kings and queens back to be in the court party, you know, for the king and queen of this year. And they're also reaching out to people throughout the community to help us raise funds, you know, which all goes to funds the program. And that, that's what I wanted to point out. This is a fundraiser. Is. Without it, I mean, you don't exist. Without, no, I, I was thinking today. So we, uh, you know, we're looking to raise two, about $250,000, you know, and that's, yeah. that's like eight beds at Bridge House. Wow, it's incredible. That are going to be lived in by, you know, usually four people a year. Yeah. So it's 32 lives could be saved because of wow. this event. That, that sums it up right there. Kevin, thank you so much for being on the show. Appreciate it. Stay with us. We've got a few more guests. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Our next guest is Rob Waka. Rob is the Director of Strategy and Partnerships with Propeller. Rob, welcome to the show. Thanks so much. Uh, talk about Propeller, a little bit about the mission of your organization, if you will. Sure. Propeller is a nonprofit that's based here in New Orleans. Um, we're in Broadmoor, and mm -hmm. our mission is to further entrepreneurship, specifically social entrepreneurs, which are people who are out there solving problems in water or health care. Um, agriculture or education. So okay. those are the sectors we focus on. And, and I know you're very involved in the upcoming um, Entrepreneur Week. Talk, you've got a lot of stuff going on it's with that. It's a big that. week. We're excited about it. Uh, Idea Village has, has done a service to the yeah. community to get so many people out there for it. So last year they had over 10,000 people. Um, and this year, I mean, it's supposed to be more than that. So we're pretty excited that we're going to be a part of it. And uh, talk about all your Water Challenge Day. So Monday is the first day that we're doing anything big, and it, even though we'll be there all weekend, for um, it kicks off on Friday and, and goes through the weekend. But Monday is Water Challenge Day, which is where all day we'll be um, doing a pitch competition, mm -hmm. a bunch of talks on water issues. And it's something we should all um, be concerned about here in the community. Um, it's one of the statistics that just blows my mind is that New Orleans, or Louisiana's coastline rather, 
is 40% uh, of our nation's wetlands, really? but 90% of its losses. Wow. And so when you think about that, I mean, we'll be underwater by 2100 if we're not solving these issues. Yeah. And some people can look at that and say, well, that's a real problem. What do I do? And throw up your hands. But others are actually working on solving those problems and creating businesses that can actually make some money on the fact that you can you need to solve this issue. Yeah. And so that's what uh, Monday is going to be all about. Is there's a fifteen thousand dollar pitch competition. Um, the Greater New Orleans Foundation has been kind enough to be supporting us with that, along with Intergy and um, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase. Mm -hmm. And so we've got some great supporters, and we're really excited about about a full day about water. And, and your website is gopropeller.org. All That's information it. on the pitch can be found on the website. And you got it. Okay. And yeah, real quick. Right there, uh, your annual fundraiser is in April, uh, the Propeller Pop. That's it, Pop. And so uh, we, we do a little play on words here where we do pop-up restaurants, all serve different dishes. Uh, we'll have lots of balloons, as you can imagine. Um, and then we also talk about how uh, entrepreneurs are what sort of makes the city pop. Yeah, that's awesome. Rob, thank you so much for being on the show. Appreciate it. Good luck to you. Thank you. We've got a few more guests. Stay with us. We'll be right back. And welcome back. Patricia Cox is with us. She is the manager of the Friends Store of the Jefferson Public Library. Patricia, thank you so much for being a part of the show. Uh, the Friends Store, you were saying, is, is like the gift shop. It's a gift shop in the lobby of the East Bank Regional Library. And we sell what we call gently used books <laughs> um, and other little seasonal items. Um, little jewelry and like the holiday type thing. And, and all the money raised goes back into the that, library, right? All the money we raise from the Friends Store, from our big book sale, and from our online sale yeah. goes to um, purchase unbudgeted items for the, East, for the entire uh, Jefferson Parish Library. Patricia, you, you, you hear constantly about Friends of the Jefferson Public Library. What, what's the mission of the Friends? What is it that you, that you guys well, do? Well, that's our mission, to um, support the library, to support any literacy programs they have, um, but mainly, you know, to help them support them financially. Mm -hmm. uh, so much of the things that they need and use uh, aren't budgeted, yeah. and so we provide. We have given them um, since our first book sale, there almost 30 years ago. We have given the library over two million dollars. Wow, that is incredible! And it you've got a, us, you've got another book sale coming up, right? It took us 20 years almost to give them the first million, but since Katrina, we have that is had awesome. Wonderful, congratulations! That's awesome. Book sales. Last year, we gave the library two checks each for a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Before we run out of time, let's talk about March 31st. You've got another big event book sale up. at the Punch Train Center. Um, Everybody looks forward to it. It's a big community event. Starts um, on a Thursday and ends on Sunday. And during the sale, which we have over 60,000 books, um, we have some uh, a silent auction going on with three wonderful products this year. We've got an entire this is series of Lost. Um, it's all the DVDs and it's also a game that yeah. you can play to learn things. And we have John Fols's, um Encyclopedia of Game Cookery. It's wow. a beautiful big book. And then we also have a, a book, uh, it's a collection of sugar bowl mm -hmm. memorabilia. Uh, it's a classic history that goes from 1935 to 2007. Okay, and real quick, the hours are from? Uh, we open at... Um, 10 o'clock and we close at 8. Admission cost to get in, free to get Doesn't in? Doesn't cost anything. We, we take all credit cards. Okay. We aren't taking checks any longer. Okay. Um, but Use, are, Sunday, they, are they used books or new books? A little bit oh, of they're both? all donated they're books. All donated? Okay. Some things are library donations when the library weeds, okay. but a lot of our books, most of our books now, are from private donations. And all money does go back to the library. It all right? goes back to the library. All right, Patricia, good luck. Thank you so much for being on Thank the show. You. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
We're sitting here today with Allison, also known as the Safety Mom. Allison, thank you so much for taking time to be with us. Uh, let me begin by asking, it, it, it seems like more and more homes are secured these days because of, of home security systems naturally, but I'm curious, why are customers, like customers of Cox, why, why are customers looking to cable companies for home security? Well, as a national family safety expert, I know you're right. More and more people are getting home security systems. They're a must. And that's why, you know, I'm so excited to partner with Cox Home Life because it goes above and beyond. It's a natural extension for people to look to their cable company while they already have the technology in the house to take it to that next level and actually make their home smarter and more manageable. Well, and, and when I hear the term home life, I mean, I think of home security, but I also think of things other than security that, that, that is a marriage with security and makes my security better. So how does, how does Cox utilize technology to improve on things like that? Well, all of us are so busy in our lives. We're running here, we're running there, and we are looking to technology to help us do things. So that's what's great with Cox Home Life. This allows a person to manage their home remotely from their phone, from their internet, whatever tablet they have, so that they can turn on and off lights. They can turn on up and down the heat. They can get texts when people come in or out of the door. They can automatically unlock or lock a door. So not only is it making it more manageable, but you're actually saving money because of all of the savings from turning down your heat, turning off lights, especially when your kids forget to do it. Mm -hmm. and, and I know, uh, speaking of technology, we as parents, we, we tend to worry about our kids with technology. So how does Cox utilize technology to not only keep our kids safe, but help us monitor what's going on in our home as well? Well, that's right. 70% of us as parents are monitoring our kids with texts and phones. What's great now is we have additional peace of mind with cameras in the home to see when they come home, to see if they've come home alone. But we really can understand what they're doing when we're not there. And it certainly gives us peace of mind. Allison, thank you so much. I don't want to end with one last question because this is all all such exciting information. Where can customers go to find more information about Cox Home Life? Well, what's really cool is they can actually download an app and try it out for free to see how it works. And then after that, they can go to cox.com forward slash home life to get more information. Allison, thank you so much for taking time to be a part of this today. We've been talking to Allison Jacobson, the safety mom, and we've been talking about Cox Home Life. And welcome back to the show. Appreciate you joining us today. Our next guest is Andrew Jacquet. Andrew is the executive director for the St. Bernard Economic Development Foundation, an, an incredible organization, and you guys do such a great job uh, down in St. Bernard. I know you're proud of all the work yes, that's going you. on down there, and, and the foundation is driving a, a lot of that. And, and the reason I say that is, uh, give us the mission of the organization, kind of what you're all about Absolutely. and so forth. Absolutely. So our organization was founded in 2005, actually, obviously in, in the wake of Hurricane Katrina to try to rebound the parish, uh, especially in commerce and business. Mm -hmm. But today we've reformed a bit to be a more of a traditional economic development organization. And the mission is very simple. It's to retain and create jobs, build wealth, and improve the quality of life in St. Bernard. And, and when you say rebound, I mean, you guys had to start from zero. That's right. I, uh, everybody yeah, I like knows say that. We were the hardest hit parish I, I agree. Um, in Louisiana. Not a single house did not yeah. receive water or business for that matter. Hardest hit and less known about being <laughs> no the hardest question. hit. No question. Andrew, you've, you've got a big event coming up on March the 14th. It's your startup event. Talk about that and how people can get involved. Absolutely. So Startup St. Bernard is presented by our organization and the Miro Foundation. And of course, this is in conjunction with the Idea Village during mm -hmm. New Orleans Entrepreneur Week. Essentially, we have narrowed it down to, to five finalists who will pitch to a live audience and a panel of esteemed judges on the 14th. The winner will receive the largest prize package of all of Entrepreneur Week, which is valued at $110,000. That, that's incredible. Yes. That's and absolutely over incredible. Over $33,000 in startup capital. Wow. And you have your five finalists. I mean, they are selected right now. They are. And okay. we're thrilled with the diversity of these five finalists. Can you tell us who they are? I can. Um, they range from, you know, food processing and manufacturing with mm -hmm. a business like Christie's Dream Seafood, mm -hmm. all the way to a 3D printing and fabrication company with Atlas Mechanical Design. In between, we have food distribution projects, we have a startup coffee shop. It's very exciting about um, 
the diversity and types of businesses we have. All five finalists are from the St. Bernard area? Uh, some are from St. Bernard, others are currently in neighboring parishes, mm -hmm. however the winner has committed to relocate to St. Bernard for at least two years. Well that's great. And Andrew, your website is sbedf.org. Dot org, that's right. All information on the foundation can be found on the website that's as well right. as the pitch competition. Exactly. Okay. And you can also go to startupstbernard.com. Okay. And, and, and if I was an entrepreneur looking to get started in St. Bernard, this would be the perfect place to go, right? No question. Okay. And we also feel that St. Bernard is very well positioned for the entrepreneurial movement in New Orleans. You know, I don't think many people realize St. Bernard is five miles from Canal Street and two miles from, you know, the cultural mecca right, right now of the Bywater. Yeah. Uh, and, and our cost of doing business can't be beat. Yeah, Andrew, again, you guys are doing such a great job. I'm, I'm just so proud of all the work you guys are doing. You're just, you're bringing, you've brought St. Bernard back. You're not bringing it back, you brought it back. So good luck on the startup. Please continue to come on the show and talk about the foundation and how you're doing. Stay with us, we've got a couple more guests. We'll be right back. And welcome back to Across Louisiana. Always a pleasure. We always save the best guests for last, and we did it again. Ronnie Cole is with us. Ronnie is the founder of Jazz on the Bayou. Ronnie, thank you for taking the time to be here. We appreciate it. Well, thank you very much, but my wife is really the founder. <laughs> Let's, let's, I, I, just, I just go along, <laughs> but and, she's so shy, you know. But, it's, and it's smart to say that, too. Very smart to <laughs> yeah, say that. Yeah, she's sitting over there. She's hey, going to slap if, me if I... <laughs> talk about, if you will, uh, the mission of Jazz on the Bayou. I, I know you guys work real close with Easter Seals, as you always do. Right. Well, both of us have been on the board of Easter Seals. Both of us have been uh, state uh, presidents. Uh, but the, the charities that we give to... Uh, our, our Easter Seals, Louisiana, but the money is designated mm -hmm. for our area here, Greater New Orleans area, mm -hmm. and Stark, that's St. Tammany Association for Retarded Citizens, and uh, that money is, uh, of course, designated for for the North Shore and and uh, the Greater New Orleans area, and then a lesser amount of money to uh, to uh, homeless, or battered yeah. women, uh, and uh, but th those are the those are the, the main things, and some for the arts. But yeah. last year, uh, you know, I call this our backyard event because it's in it, our backyard. It, it really you know? is. And uh, we gave out of this backyard event after expenses. You know, most most fundraisers, if they do ten thousand, fifteen, twenty thousand, you know, they, they've really I mean, they distribute after mm -hmm. expenses. Mm -hmm. One hundred and sixteen thousand oh five hundred. Oh my gosh, that is incredible. No one gets paid. Absolutely incredible. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, uh, every time I say it, I get goosebumps because yeah. it's uh, it, it's you, you said it's it's an incredible it is. amount. It really is. And, and, and Ronnie, it's April the second, third. April second and third. And cost if you want to in, come on a, on April Fool's Day, we'll put you to work. <laughs> <laughs> Admission cost to get in or anything like that. A hundred dollars. Okay. Um, and that gets you. Anything you want except my wife. Okay. In your backyard, right? <laughs> in my backyard. Uh, in right. our backyard. And, and before they cut me off, the website is jazzonthebayou.com. All the information, and we'll put that on the screen. All the information on the event can be found on the website. That's it. Do, do you have to register in order to attend, or you just get well, a ticket? Well, we, we prefer because we try to keep it uh, uh, at no more than 400 people. Yeah, okay. Uh, and uh, so consequently, if we just let everyone go crazy and just show up, you might end up with 600, and th then we can't take care of them. Yeah. Gardner, How big's your backyard? <laughs> yeah, my wife, Gardner, uh, everything has to be, everyone has to have seats, uh, assigned seating, yeah. white tablecloths, uh, you know, everything is, is first class. Yeah. And um, As well as it should be. It's your backyard. You. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Ronnie, they're, they're cutting me off, but uh, uh, again, Congratulations on such an incredible event at the jazzonthebayou.com. All the information on the event, April the 2nd, 3rd, can be found. You've been watching Across Louisiana. My name is Steve Sawyer. Thank you for being with us, and we'll see you next time.